Hello everybody and welcome to Bright Weird. Interesting subject this one, one that I hope will get you all thinking a little bit. This is an introduction to the Holy Grail. This is a cathedral, Truro Cathedral. It's located in the city of Truro in Cornwall, which is in the southwest of England. This structure is likely a direct architectural descendant and an evolution of something, and what that something is might shock you. It's little known fact that all cathedrals were built in very specific locations, some on hills, some in valleys, some on vast plains. But what determined the location to the architects? Again, the answer may very well shock you. And what was the purpose of the building? Wealthy people have chosen to be buried in this very cathedral, as they have many other cathedrals across the ages. But I think we can agree that this cathedral was not built as a tomb. So why all the effort? Why are all cathedrals built at these specific locations? You're probably shouting, it's a religious building. And if you are, you're not wrong. But what is religion? And is there a higher purpose? Again, the answer might shock you. Throughout history, the largest building projects have been for a specific purpose. A nuclear power station is a huge undertaking and is built to create energy. The International Space Station, the largest engineering project in the history of mankind to progress with science and fleets of supercarriers to wage war. The largest of projects have always had an expected output or purpose, but few projects are as large as the programme to build thousands of pyramids globally in antiquity or hundreds of cathedrals across Europe in more recent times. Some of those cathedrals took hundreds of years to build and all this for religion or for a higher purpose. I'll first start with locations. It's a little known fact that all traditional tr cathedrals are built on the site of former holy sites. Those sites were marked by pagans as stone circles or coits or standing stones. And I suppose we should go further and ask, why was there a stone circle at that location? I mean, why was that particular place special to the pagans? Certain places on the Earth's surface have been revered as holy or spiritually significant throughout the ages. Those pagan traditions of Europe marked these places with those stone circles. These places are the convergence points of something known as ley lines. And I know you're thinking, hippies, but there's a very real science that explains the existence of ley lines. The Earth is a giant electromagnet with an iron core spinning its way in its orbit around the Sun. The magnetic field of, that the Earth creates acts as a shield forming a magnetosphere around the Earth and protecting us from solar radiation that would otherwise scorch and sanitise the Earth. Just enough of the sun's energy gets through to give life to all animal and vegetable life, while the harmful solar wind is deflected and seen to us on the Earth as the aurora borealis, or northern lights. The Earth is a huge planet-sized generator, and it doesn't just create magnetism, it also creates vast amounts of electricity. And this leads to a curious phenomenon known as earth sound. These earth sounds are naturally occurring and are well below the bounds of normal hearing. So where do these earth sounds come from? It's likely that the earth's core acts as a transducer and a transducer is a device that converts electromagnetic energy to sound or vice versa. And an example of a transducer is a microphone or a speaker. Our Earth's core is made of iron nickel, and iron nickel is known to act as a filter, only emanating certain frequencies. In this case, the sound of the frequency of the Earth, which is 7.83 hertz, or 7.8 cycles per second. I'm playing this sound now through your speakers, but you cannot hear it, as human ears don't start working until about 20 hertz. So the sound of 7.83 hertz is just below what you can hear. This earth sound is the earth's vibrational frequency. It's known as the Schumann resonance, binaural beats or theta waves. 
and this Schumann residence is known to be extremely beneficial for grounding, stability and the well-being of human beings. The sound the earth makes is like a sub-audible heartbeat and these 7.83 hertz sound waves which emanate from the core radiate across the earth's surface in peaks and troughs in a lattice structure. The areas where the earth energy is most focused are known as ley lines and where those ley lines meet or cross are known as sweet spots or convergence points, further enhancing the earth's energy at those special places. And it's at these convergence of ley lines that the ancients chose to build their stone circles and coits, their temples and their other monuments. At these holy places the natural earth sounds are concentrated and may act as a trigger that could remotely open your third eye and activating or triggering higher human senses. We've evolved in this earth system and where we've evolved unable to hear or see the earth sound, we've fortunately evolved in a way with an ability to feel its presence and interact with it in a very odd way and that's what I mean by higher senses. To feel the presence of earth energy one must be spiritually in tune with the earth and that's nothing special I mean what it means is you just got to sit down quietly somewhere and meditate that's also known as praying and if you do this at certain places you may feel the sound of the earth in all of its glory in the same way that a disco speaker may resonate bass through the body of a deaf man the earth's energy will resonate very subtly through your body if you are at one of those convergence points but there is more at certain times of the year earth energy peaks at these locations and at those times throughout the year coincidentally religious festivals happen at those very places and I challenge everyone listening to my voice to enter a cathedral and sit quietly and not feel the earth energy as it flows through you. There's a strange phenomenon known as manifestation it's also known as the secret or thoughts become things and it's said that you can manifest the world around you just through the power of thought. I mean, if you think it and you believe it, that thing will likely come to pass. And that's a really strange thing, but it's, you know, it's something that's, that's tangible and known about. And this is what praying is all about at those locations. This manifestation phenomenon is amplified. And when more than one person prays for the same thing, your prayers are more likely to be heard. So if you want to manifest something and two people think about that thing in the same manner, it's much more likely to happen. Could we further amplify this strange manifestation effect? Focus the earth energy on us? Maybe to focus it further? Well, it turns out we can. The design of cathedrals makes them an acoustical piece of art. They are mathematically designed as a resonance chamber to further amplify earth energy at a place where it's already concentrated. A cathedral is a machine, an amplifier for talking directly to the earth or to God. As a spiritual machine, it tunes human beings into the earth itself. But before we continue, we should talk about the architectural ancestor to the cathedral, and that is the pyramid. And one prime example in particular is the Great Pyramid at Giza. As cathedrals hold burials but are not tombs, pyramids also hold burials but are not tombs. And it's true that the Pharaoh Khufu may well have chosen to be buried inside the Great Pyramid, but it was likely never built as his tomb. Pyramids are temples to the earth, built at specific locations and from materials that form resonance chambers to amplify the earth sound and create standing waves at particular places within the structure. The Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid has a ceiling of a curious design. A similar design is seen in radar systems used to terminate high energy waveguides, where a dummy load is used to absorb all energy of a particular frequency without causing standing waves thus stabilising frequency dependent systems. Coincidence? I'll let you decide. The King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid is placed geometrically and geographically exactly in a position 
where it focuses the holy earth frequency, which to some is known as the Holy Grail. This earth sound emanates in a rotating vortex pattern that does look like a tornado or, on a smaller scale, a chalice or grail. Some Templar cathedrals have two-dimensional carvings in the eaves on how this sound would look if it was in two dimensions. And if you look into those eaves of old cathedrals and Templar chapels, you may find various odd stone carvings encoded and disguised into these shapes or other sound frequencies. These sounds and particular frequencies were of great concern to the Templars, and it should be noted that certain frequencies such as, but not limited to the earth sound, can act on the human condition and affect states of consciousness. Only one object is found in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid, and that is a granite box. Perhaps this is the exact focal point of all of the earth energy that flows through that structure. And if you were to lie down in that box, you would be connected to the earth in a way unfathomable to the sceptical. Napoleon famously did this during his conquest of Egypt with very disturbing and well-documented results. Imagine spending time alone in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid at one of the peak dates for earth frequency. This is unlikely to happen in these present times due to the amount of tourists which flood that divine place. But you can spend time alone in silence in a cathedral or even in a stone circle. And I wholeheartedly endorse this activity, not to promote any particular religion, but for the sole aim of saving your soul from the horror of modern society for just one moment. Okay, everybody, I'd like to say thanks for sticking with me on this video and watching it. I've only really skimmed the surface on what is potentially an absolutely marvellous and very in-depth subject. And all of the subject matter pretty much came from a guy called Rory Duff. And I'd like to say thank you very much to Rory. I'll put a link to his website below. He's written a fantastic book called Holy Grail Found. And there's even a YouTube video uh, that you can watch about the whole subject in much greater detail. Like I say, I've only skimmed the surface. The purpose here was to uh, get people thinking and look a little bit deeper into the subject and hopefully it's just given you a little bit of information. I'm Steve, this is Bright Weird, thanks for watching.